How to build a Blackgate Sweet Pea 5 inch gauge locomotive. This is part 3. Examining the cast iron steam cylinders, piston rod glands and pistons. I know that I keep saying that I am not starting this job yet because I have too many other jobs on the go. This is the time of year when I have to prepare my accounts for my accountant, so it's quite handy having this locomotive on the kitchen table. I can do little bits and pieces at it, but nothing major. I'm just basically dismantling it. In between, doing my accounts. The paintwork is reasonable on this chassis. It's marked in places, but there's nothing there that can't be put right by the application of some etching primer and a new top coat of satin black paint. Most of the paint is in good condition, so if it's not broken, don't fix it. Time to look at the cylinders in detail. This is the right-hand cylinder, and as you can see, it has a gland that actually fits. Well, at least it has a gland on the piston rod. There aren't any glands on the valve rods. They've been lost in the past. I mentioned in the last episode that I'm a bit concerned about how close the hole into the steam chest is to the steam chest cover. Today it's Friday the 19th of January and I won't be going over to Blackgates until Monday. I'll be picking up a box of sweet pea parts that Blackgates sell for this engine and also a set of drawings. I also mentioned in the last episode that I do not like this gland arrangement but it's the way it is so I think I'll go with it. Here I'm removing the very thin bolts that hold the gland against the o-ring to seal the piston rod. It's quite a refined way of doing it. You don't need to put a lot of pressure on it. The gland doesn't need to be very tight. Just enough to hold the o-ring in the correct place. And here on the piston rod, you can see the o-ring. There are a few factors on this engine as to whether I continue with the job or not. I need to find out how good or bad the cylinders are. So here I'm removing the rear cylinder cover. This is a special shape because it incorporates the mounting for the crosshead guide. The cylinder cover is held to the cylinder using bolts, not nuts and studs, but this should be fine. I loosen the bolts using a spanner, then I use a nut spinner to spin them out. Unfortunately, the cylinder cover doesn't want to leave the cylinder. Nothing's holding it in place. I think it needs a bit of mild ultraviolence. Please note I do not recommend hitting miniature steam locomotive parts with a hammer, but this is the quickest and easiest way to dislodge a part that is stuck. I didn't hit it very hard. Just enough to create a shockwave, which did the trick. I removed the cover and then the piston. The two steam grade silicone o-rings are in very good condition. Although I haven't actually measured the diameter of the cylinder, the finish on the bore is beautiful. I'll turn on the live audio to confirm that. Oh, the finish is beautiful. I wasn't talking to myself in this bit. I was talking to my friend James Evans, who sat next to me. But when he speaks, he speaks so fast, even I struggle to tell what he's saying. When I was 17, I used to do a lot of things very differently to the way I do them today, speech being one of them. But as I'm now 71, my speech has definitely slowed down. And my brain responses have slightly, but not much. I'm still really rapid in the brain department, and I'm pleased about that. Think about it. I make and edit a video almost every day of my life, and I do other things in the afternoons. Usually it involves going into the workshop to make tomorrow's video, followed by doing something else. A video almost every day is for my Patreon supporters. The details are at the beginning of this video in the text. If you want to become a member, that will be very useful for me. And if the Patreon numbers drop much lower, then the videos are going to be less. Patreon, in their infinite wisdom, put something on that allowed people to become free members. But the problem is, you don't get to see everything, you just see some of the old videos. Patreon is a pay-per-view system that allows me to make these videos. And with these free memberships, what's happening is some of my Patreon members are cancelling their membership and becoming free members. As I said, Patreon is a pay-per-view system that allows me to make these videos, so whenever I see a free member, I block them. I've refitted the piston at the other side, and I've oiled the cylinder, and it's very, very smooth. 
Now to work on the left hand cylinder. Unfortunately this cylinder is attached to the crosshead and you mustn't do this. I'm only doing it because I realise that the piston rod is not very tight. I'm using this small pair of pliers very gently to remove the piston rod from the crosshead. And the marking of the piston rod is absolutely minimal. Thinking forward on this job, I'm going to drill a couple of holes in the end of the piston. That will allow me to remove the piston rod from the crosshead without removing the cylinder. Instead, I will just remove the front cylinder cover, use a pair of circlet pliers in the holes, and unscrew the piston from the crosshead. I like the engines that I work on to be serviceable. And normally, using pliers on any engine parts is a big no no. While I'm unbolting the cylinder from the frames, I would just like to mention that this gland needs a little bit of machining because it's too big to go in the hole where the o ring is. Here's the inside part of the crosshead. You can see how it's made lots of countersunk bolts that go all the way through to the other side and they have nuts on the end of them. These are a bit scruffy and they're going to need a bit of work. The good news is the thread on the end of the piston rod is excellent. At this stage I'm clearly looking for problems. Problems I can put right. Here's the gland nut and when I remove it you can see there are some errors in this area. The holes have initially been drilled in the wrong place and then plugged and one of the plugs is invading the space where the gland fits. With a bit of luck, when I get round to this part of the job, I'll use my Proxon motor tool with a drum sander just to clean up the bit of the plug that is invading the space where the gland lives. The good news is, the piston in this cylinder is also perfect and the bore is beautiful. I've removed the o-ring to put it somewhere safe. All I'm doing for now is refitting the cylinder cover just to keep everything together. There are some problems with the cylinders and I'll show those in the next episode. But that's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.